Hey guys, welcome to Where Do We Begin? This is Hunter Clark, number 11 from the Saints. You probably wouldn't know who I am. I'm a bit of a battler, but um, hope you hope you look forward to the episode. Cheers. Cheers for that, Hunter. My name is Harper. I'm the co-host of the Where Do We Begin podcast. And my other co-host is Lockie. How are you, Lockie? Yeah, mate, I'm just super keen to get Hunts onto the podcast. You know, somebody that I've known for a long time. Um, He's such a humble, down-to-earth guy who also just happens to be one of the up-and-coming stars of the AFL competition. You know, best 22 under 22, top 10 in the Saints, best and fairest. He is an absolute gun of the future. Yeah, well, he's not just a gun of the future. He's a star right now. He absolutely killed it in 2020 for the Saints, and he killed it on this podcast as well. So let's get stuck right into it. Let's dive in. All right, I've got a great guest for us this week. He's a young gun down at St Kilda, uh, picked seven into the 2017 National Draft and a bloke I've known for way too long. Hunter Clark, how are you, mate? Good, Gibbsy and Harps. Thanks for, thanks for having me on the show to have a chat. Yeah, no worries, mate. You've been asking me the last couple of weeks, so I thought I'd finally answer your DMs and get you on. Yeah, I saw it uh, pop up on... Facebook a few times and I thought I'd, I'd love to talk some dribble with you so um, I definitely didn't cop 50 messages from you to get on the show but um, <laughs> good, good to be on. Yeah your bank details still the same I want to make sure the money I tra- transferred you is good gone to your yeah. account. Yeah come through mate come through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a pleasure having you on mate um, what have you been doing uh, last few weeks since footy season's finished? Yeah um, not a not a whole lot um I just had surgery about four, three, four weeks ago. So I've just had a little um, keyhole surgery on my meniscus. So, um, yeah, I haven't been able to do a whole heap. Just started getting into things as of late. Um, So started just training last week, which is good to um, get the body going again. But, yeah, I wasn't doing a whole heap. Just seeing a lot of mates who I hadn't hadn't seen all year, having a few beers. yeah, most days with a few, yeah, just mates and stuff like that, and um, just moved houses also. So haven't been doing a lot, but still been busy enough each day, really. Tell us about the new house, mate. What's it got going for it? Yeah, it's um, it's funny we moved. So we've moved, yeah, directly uh, next door to where we used to live. We got kicked out, or uh, well, not kicked out, but um, asked to leave the house as they sold it to a little family that we were renting in. Me and my housemate Jack. Um, so, yeah, funny enough, two days later, next door, come up for sale and um, just slotted straight in. So couldn't couldn't have worked any better, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it's a nice little house, a bit bigger than the old one. So, yeah, pretty wrapped for summer. Just for the listeners, which Jack at the Saints, is that where we know there's a few Jacks at the Saints? Which, who are you Could be with? one of 20. <laughs> yeah, there's, I think there's like eight or nine, but... Um, Jack Loney, so Jack Loney. Um, he's a Peninsula boy. Um, I lived lived with him all of last year next door, and um, yeah, we're great mates. So he um, it's pretty easy just get next door and keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, mate. Now I've got a little bit of a question I want to know. I think every time that we're watching you and you rack up the footy, which is you know twenty or thirty times a day game, mm. the commentators it's never Hunter, it's never Clark, it's always. Hunter Clark, could you please explain why they always use your full name? Have you got any idea? No, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, Mum said that a couple of times. I never, never really watched back the, the game. <laughs> Spare <laughs> With, um, me. No, I actually don't. Every now and then, if I do something good, which is rare, I'll have a look at it. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I think a few, a few players get that. I think just a bit of a, I don't know, Clark probably alone sounds shit. So they. Um, they chucked the first name in as well. Mate, probably the That's best, I think, comment, bit of commentary I've heard is when, I don't remember who said it, but they say if your name was in reverse, Clark Hunter, you'd be an accountant. Yeah, I think that was yeah, a few years back. I got sent that quite a bit, actually. All my mates, or not mates, but does anyone started calling me an accountant. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit weird. It's a bit of a, yeah, commentators are a bit, a bit different, but they good. you've got to have them. And just quickly before we get onto the more serious stuff as well, I've got to ask: Was that you at the Seven uh, Eleven asking for a bite of a Maxibon? 
<laughs> bit like you, to be honest. <laughs> Serious, dude. Yeah, but mate, um, we're, we're here, so obviously a big stage player now, big name, but uh, we're a little birdie told us growing up, you're a big Richmond fan, is that true? Yeah, I used to used to be a Tigers fan, um, so I got drafted in 2017 when they won the first of the last three flags that they've won, um, so yeah, I got to see that flag and then... I think a month later I was drafted, so um, kind of timed it perfectly to to be able to experience one of them as a fan. Um, but, yeah, it was ever since I was little, I uh, used to love the Eagles when I was younger. Um, and then and then my old man's a Tiger, so eventually um, become all shifted back to the Tigers. But, um, yeah, a lot of – it's cool playing against them. Played, obviously, the final against them this year. Which was pretty, um, pretty surreal coming up against yeah, like Dusky and all those, all those um, super players. So um, to idolise them grow- growing up and then be able to compete against them, yeah, it's pretty special. Yeah, what was that like playing against Dusty? Because I know you're obviously a massive fan, and I think we've had a few debates in the past. Dusty v mm. Dangerfield. So mm. what was that like to actually play against him, somebody that you've idolised growing up? Yeah, he's a he's a gun. Um, he's pretty. Yeah, I, I, he's the best player I've played against for sure. Um, he's just, yeah, as in finals, he's unstoppable. He just turns it on when he wants to. Um, like, obviously, in the grannies, three norms, it's just, yeah, he's a superstar. But um, you do get a little bit of um, goosebumps at first, but not goosebumps, but you're like, shit, like that's dusty or whatever. But, um, you know, as as soon as the game starts, you kind of move on from it. Was there a particular player you were matched up on for most of the game against the Tigers? Um, no, not really. I think I played, yeah, across half back and through the midfield um, for the game. So kind of just changed. Really, I started, um, you know, playing on Rioli at times, Lambert, um, Prestia, like all those Jack Graham, just like those players who would go through the middle and high half forward kind of role. So, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's rare that you get one one particular matchup. Maybe one player in the back line will get, like all the smaller types will get a set role where the others will just like, yeah, rotate through whoever's down there. And same with the midfield, you kind of just head to head with whoever's around you. Yeah, I'd be keen to know, does your family still go for um, St Kilda or Richmond? Because your dad was a massive Richmond fan. <laughs> Yeah, no, they all, all go for Saints now. I um, think Dad still obviously like has a soft spot for <laughs> going, going for them for however long he went for them. But, um, no, nah, they all Saints fans now. They come to as many games as they can. Um, and, yeah, they love it. Little brother, he loves his footy now. And Gussie, he loves it. And he, he loves, like, knows everything about the Saints and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, everyone, as soon as I was drafted, really, it was just straight away onto the Saints. Yeah, great man, Gussie. So, um, obviously, you are talking before about playing halfback in that final. Have you always been a halfback flank, like going back to your junior football days at the mighty Mount Martha uh, Football Factory? Um, yeah. Is that where you pl- played as a junior or was it more midfield or was it a bit of a combination? Um, yeah, it was a combination. I think started, oh, yeah, pretty much everywhere, a bit forward even in Mount Martha. Um it's just um, as I got older, probably more midfield um, permanently. But as like I, as I started when I was a little little kid, it was you know you just play a quarter, a quarter in every position, um, go up forward, kick a few snags, go back, a few intercepts, um, and go in the guts and get a kick. So that was how it all started, I guess. And then as I got older, yeah, I played probably mid, and then. As I went through Stingrays and Vic Country and stuff, yeah, it would be mid, half back, half forward even at times, just, just wherever really. So do you remember that time that you played up in my team in finals? Yeah, I remember I was probably – I reckon I kicked a, a point at half time that got scored as a goal. Um, <laughs> I was right I, next to you when you did that. Yeah, it went from behind but – I fucking – oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought I shanked. I did shank it. I know I shanked it. <laughs> he gave it a goal. But, um, don't know how that happened, but I think we only won by two, one or two goals in the end. So I think we lost actually. 
No, I reckon we won. <laughs> but, uh, oh, jeez, Matt. But so, some of our sources out on the ground uh, and on the peninsula, they tell me that a uh, uh, pretty big name, a big uh, young prospect like you had the pleasure of playing against you. He goes by the name of Luke Davies Uniac, and he was a bit of a gun back in the day in that league, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, Luke was a gun. Um, still is. Yeah, still is a gun. As I grew up, growing up, yeah, he's probably the best player I played with, for sure. He just um, dominated. He was pretty, he was pretty like, solid back in the day as a growing up. He was a, a big, big unit. So, um, yeah, you know, he, could, he just took hangers and ta- couldn't tackle him. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're good mates now, going through a lot of footy together. And um, he also lives in Elwood just down the road. So, see him still a little bit every now and then. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a great man, and um, yeah, he yeah he's a gun. He's a gun. Yeah, you guys had a pretty strong junior team, though. You also had Carlton player Tom DeConey as well as I reckon your under 16s team had something like nine or ten like Stingray squad players or something like that. But you never won the premiership. Yeah, no, we never we never did. I, when we were up until I think under 14s or 15, same as your team, we we always had two teams. So um, and they were both even. We'd always be like second, third or fourth, both the teams. So, um, and then as you get older, like players start to drop off as in not playing um, for one reason or another. But yeah, we, we were pretty good in under 15, 16s. I think we, I think we lost a granny and lost a prelim. Like we were, we were there about, so we just, we were little, like we were bloody tiny kids versus like some pretty big teams that were just... <laughs> you know, way bigger than us. And in junior footy, that fucking helps heaps. <laughs> yeah, and I guess going into like the um, the Stingrays and the AIS, so you actually did a week of training with St Kilda before you got picked up there um, yeah. a year before through the AIS program. Talk about how that helped your football as well as going to the club that you eventually got drafted to a year early. Yeah, um, yeah. so through that AIS, we, yeah, I was with a week with Saints, um, which was lucky they were down in Seaford at the time. So, um, you know, it was only half an hour down the road, which which made it pretty easy. So I was staying at home and just going into training each day. Um, but, yeah, it made it a lot easier when I initially got drafted, just knowing a few familiar faces um, and having a few, few of the boys, um, you know, remember who I was and made, it, made me feel comfortable um, straight away. I was pretty nervous. Going to the Saints just because I was a bit, I was like, shit, I don't know if they'll remember me, stuff like that. But, um, that's you know, how I like, feel every time I met, I message you. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I don't know how I still do remember you, <laughs> probably because you're a pest. But. <laughs> <laughs> but were they the only club that were, um, like that you were likely to go to, or did you have some other clubs chatting, you, chatting to you before the draft? Um, yeah, I had it. So, you probably, I chatted to, I think, every club except for Port Adelaide um, and Port, I think Port Adelaide's first pick might have been in the 40s or something so um, yeah they didn't they didn't reach out to me but I spoke to every other club I'm pretty sure and um, I kind of knew my manager said that um, he was pretty confident probably a month out from the draft I'll go to the Saints at seven um, but they didn't tell me anything I hadn't spoken to them for months so I, I, they kind of I think they wanted to just keep it um, on the down though because a lot of clubs you know, they end up knowing where players are going and, um, yeah so they didn't, they didn't tell me that until draft night so I didn't actually have any idea but Carl, Carlton told me um, they had 3 and 10 they said if I was there at 10 or 3 and 9 or something that they would um pick me if I got through to their pick. Um, I thought maybe three or five, there was a little bit of interest, but um, I was pretty pretty keen for Saints to get me, so pretty um, pretty lucky with that in the end. Yeah, so it's interesting. So they sort of let you know like a month before that they were likely going to take you. Yeah. Um, yeah, They. I guess they had a bit more inside word than I did, but... Um, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't too confident on it. I knew they were pretty, were keen enough, but didn't know. Yeah, they told me if they were going to take me, they'd catch up with me again, which they didn't. So, I thought um, you know, I thought it was a bit a bit sketchy, but in the end, um, yeah, I was pretty pretty lucky and. True to mean, keep them keen. 
Yeah, well, that's that's how they done it. So, <laughs> um, no, it was a pretty pretty special night with the family up up in Sydney that night. Yeah, now obviously you went at pick seven, but was there ever like a bit of a nagging feeling that like like all the clubs might have just gone cold on you all of a sudden? You're like, oh shit, maybe maybe I won't go high in the draft or in the draft at all on the night. Um, no, not really. I think I knew. The clubs before pick seven weren't gonna weren't gonna take me, so I was pretty kind of expected everything that went before me to happen. And then, um, yeah, when it when it did get to my pick or seven, I wasn't I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but I was I was listening a bit a bit more closely, and yeah, it turned out to be me. And um, yeah, I can't really remember a lot of the moment to be honest. A bit a bit caught up in it at the time, but. Um, yeah, it was just it was good to get out of the way in a way as well. Yeah, hundred percent. So I guess going into your first preseason at down at Seaford, what was that like for you? You know, I guess first time among AFL players. Like, were there any people that sort of took you took you under your wing a little bit and sort of helped you out? And what was that experience like? Like, you would have been pretty nervous. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty nervous. I was pretty, I was very unfit initially, um, pretty weak. So it was. Physically, it was pretty challenging, um, but it was pretty exciting as well. There's five other blokes who got drafted with me, so we all did it together. Um, I moved out of home pretty quickly, I think three months in up to Cheltenham, so that was that was also a good experience. Um, good reception up in Cheltenham compared to Elwood? Yeah, probably a bit better than <laughs> Cheltenham. Um, but yeah, no, nah, a, a lot of the boys really... Um, Loans who I live with now, he, he he looked after me for a few years. Um, a lot of the boys, uh, Luke Dunstan, uh, a lot of my close mates who I'm, you know, Caulfield, Patton, um, we all, you know, come through together. So, yeah, it helped, helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you, What was your kind of, because uh, you said you were a bit unfit going into it, what was your... Uh, the new routine that you had to pick up in the first few months or maybe even like the first year going to the club in terms of fitness and diet and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, before being drafted, I'd never yeah, had a diet or really gone to the gym much or anything like that. So that was all um, a big sh- bit different. But after, yeah, a couple of months, you get in the routine of being up early, training, um, you know, training two or three times a day, that type of stuff that type of stuff. So um, after a little while, you, yeah, you start to get into it. And now in my, yeah, going in my third or fourth preseason, but third, like full one. Um, yeah. It's kind of, you kind of adjusted fully to it really now um, and start to do yeah, a bit more work and a bit more training, which you, you can cope with a bit better. Yeah, and I believe that you might have had a little bit of a nickname at the Saints after a certain Shrek character. I don't remember who. Could you please enlighten me? Not too sure, mate. You tell me. <laughs> you might have been from Shrek 1. It was Lord something. Can you? Oh, yeah, Lord Lord Farquaad. Um, yeah, I got that a couple of times. I got that a fair bit, actually. Pretty pretty average. It, it wouldn't. I wouldn't get called that in games and stuff, just... <laughs> For a cheap laugh, a few boys, a few boys would give me that. You're a big fan of Shrek? Nah, well, as a little kid, yeah, not too bad. But um, I actually saw Shrek come up the other day. Wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind having a watch. Yeah, good yeah. content that from you. Now I hear that over the break we're sort of jumping a bit, but on that Shrek, because I know you're a massive Lord of the Rings fan, you've watched that plenty of times, and you even started reading the books, mate. I'd, didn't even know that you read much. So that, that came as a bit of a surprise to me. Harper read that today and I said, mate, I don't believe it. <laughs> Did you read past the first chapter? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's the first, probably the, oh, I reckon it'd be the second book I've ever tried to read outside of school. So, um, <laughs> Did you finish yeah, it? I don't know. Going up to Queensland, I didn't have, there wasn't a lot that I was going to be able to do up there. So I thought I'd take a book up. I read I read a hundred pages. I haven't. It's a, it's a big. Had book, an article so. about it. <laughs> Is it really? I don't know. It was a big part of it about how you're uh, reading and. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know some. Yeah, I, I, I tried reading it. It's, it's a good read. I'm just like 
I haven't read it for probably two or three months now, so I'm probably not going to get back to it. Oh, mate, I'll I'd, I'd do that as well, mate. I actually reread The Lord of the Rings. I reckon I read the, re- read the first one a year ago. I then, during last lockdown, read uh, Two Towers, and then on the yeah. third one, haven't haven't opened it up, mate. I've done the exact same. So don't yeah. don't worry about it. It happens even to the best and probably some of the smartest people you know. <laughs> <laughs> or the best people I know, absolutely, yeah. mate. <laughs> I'm not a massive fan of The Lord of the Rings books, to be honest. Like, yeah, like you said, they're a bit dense, tricky to read, you know. Like, oh, I'll read a bit, but, yeah, Lord of the Rings books. Not, I like the movies, but not the greatest of the books. To yeah, honest. they're tough to read. There's a lot of weird, weird words and stuff that don't make a lot of sense. But, um, oh, yeah, the movies, are, the movies are all time, so I'll stick to the movies. Yeah, mate, Peter Jackson's a genius. But so then what did you do up at the hub if you weren't reading a book a day, as the article <laughs> claimed? And you obviously you're not much of a surfer. Um, yeah. oh, well, I think I think that's correct. You've got the surfer hair, but you're a bit I like actually, me with other sport, I, all the gear I actually and no bought, idea. bought a surfboard up there. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, but there wasn't. Yeah, we couldn't do a lot, so we're pretty we're pretty much in lockdown up there. Stay dry. Um, not as severe, but like, um, so we could go. We could go to the beach. So I'd spend pretty much every day. We'd we'd go for a swim and lie in the sun for a couple of hours. Um, down down Noosa Beach, um, and yeah, I bought a surfboard, took it out a few times, and then I hurt my knee. Um, so I wasn't able to take. I hurt my knee probably four or five weeks left, so I wasn't able to take it out again. But um, it was good fun, pretty useless, but it was it was good fun to give it a go. But yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a heap to do, but you know, it was twenty eight degrees every day, so sitting down the beach or in the sun on the roof of the resort we're at wasn't wasn't the end of the world or wasn't the worst thing yeah well i'm actually i'm gonna give surfing a crack this weekend i reckon i'm getting i'm getting a wetsuit i've got an old board how do you reckon i'll go mate well mate i don't know i've seen you do a lot of sports and you don't do too well i can't imagine surfing be your forte Oh, gee whiz, mate! I've had you a measure in the cricket nets for years, so I'll keep I'll keep that on the down low, mate, because I don't want to talk Please, about mate. me too much. Please, mate, don't don't lie to yourself. <laughs> don't don't lie to your listeners. <laughs> now, mate, we're, we're talking about the hub. Last week, uh, we found out that Harry Perriman's actually a bit of an aspiring food critic, so we're talk, uh, turning into a bit of a culinary podcast as opposed to a sports podcast. So, mate. Tell us about the uh, the food up in the Noosa Hub or in the hotel or the resort you were staying in. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was, it was buffet meals pretty much every day. So we we weren't allowed to eat at cafes or restaurants. So yeah, you could buy you could get takeaway meals. So most most days you'd have brekkie at the hub in the hub. So like a buffet, like a bit of eggs bacon and all that type of stuff then there'd be cereals toast all. so that was pretty good each day um most days probably would get lunch down the street um it's just like any any lunch any cafe street cafe food really so nothing too special and then the dinners um they were hit and miss there were some there were some good as meals um you know they they, they covered like every type of meal really but um some of them were pretty sloppy and um, yeah, you would you would see you would see what's on the menu in the morning. You'd know pretty 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 um, soon whether you're going to be eating dinner down the street or not. But um, there was a nice fish and chip shop that me and a few of the boys went to a fair bit. Um, got a few you know schnitzels and not a few burger joints. Um, there wasn't a whole lot in Noosa, but yeah, it made do. It's good to be back down here though. The food the food's pretty nice down here. You love Noosa though, you, don't you? Head up there most years. That would be like the ideal hub spot for you, mate. You you can't keep you away from Noosa. I reckon you'll probably end up back there over New Year's, knowing you. <laughs> no, mate. I've been to Noosa once in my life. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but Lockie was so confident telling me before the podcast. Oh, he goes up there every year. But, oh. <laughs> no, I've uh, I've been up to Noosa once, probably probably four years ago. Went from Byron down to Noosa, or vice versa. Um, yeah, one's in the life. Jeez, my nice mail's spot. no good. My mail's no good. Yeah, no, your mail's, Check your your sense, mail's mate. off, mate. <laughs> I, I've spent a hundred odd days there now, though, so I, probably, I won't be back there for a long time. 
<laughs> oh, true. Did you like it there though? How like how was the hub life? Because you know you hear a lot of like, a lot of people saying, "Oh, it was a real tough year for a lot of players." Did you find that, or like obviously you would have sucked, but it, how did it affect you? Yeah, no, it was pretty tough. Um, just yeah, obviously knowing like Melbourne was obviously not a good way at all, but I think just being in a yeah, you know. Hotel resort. We had we were pretty lucky in Noosa, so we had a resort. So it was like a little town, our resort. Whereas some clubs were just stuck in hotel rooms. So we did have it good in that front, but um, yeah, it almost felt like a school camp in a way. Just um, for, for three three months, um, every week was pretty much the same. You know, you'd have training on the same days each week, meetings. All that kind of stuff. Couldn't obviously couldn't couldn't go out anywhere or or do anything. Um, so you know it was it was a long year, but obviously I think what made it made it a bit easier to get through is remembering what um, you know Melbourne would be like and the state that all our friends and families were in. So that was probably probably what made it a bit easier. But yeah, it was pretty pretty tough. Got pretty there was some. Pretty boring stages. We, um, you know, we did a few things to kill time. Though we, look, towards the end of it, we started, um, you know, ganging up on one of the blokes' rooms. We, we caught a we caught an eel um, <laughs> in this little river thing. Tell us about it, the eel, mate. I'd, was that the first thing you've caught? Was as well. Yeah, well, I, I didn't catch it, but um, <laughs> yeah, we we caught an actual live eel. It was probably a meter long and put it in. Um, one of the blokes' bathtubs. Oh no um, way! Wow. <laughs> so, Sam Sam Alabacus, um played college basketball. He's been with us for a couple of years now. He's, he's a classic bloke. He can he has a laugh over things. But yeah, he started play a few play play a few games with his room and <laughs> um, things like that. So you know there was yeah we just had to find little ways to keep ourselves entertained and get through the weeks really. Did you have any pranks uh, pulled on you? Because I remember back a couple of years ago, that video of Shane Savage jumping out of the bin. Mm. Uh, you, yeah. Did anything else happen to you? We'll have to put that up for the listeners. It's a great, great video, that one. Yeah. No, nah, yeah, I had a couple. Um, yeah, all the boys. I get scared pretty easily, so I had a lot of jump scares, probably probably 300 jump scares over the over the trip. But me, I roomed with um, Oscar Clav and Ben Patton, so... Max King and his roommate Jack Bell were across from our like room, so we um you know we got into a few wars with them, setting off a few traps in their house and like a few eggs thrown and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but you know it was it was all in good fun. But yeah, that, those were, it felt like school camp because those were the types of things you do in school camp or when you go camping when you're little um, to you know keep yourself entertained. Yeah. Mate, that sounds unreal. Sounds like a lot more fun than what we've had the last couple of months, you know, mm-hmm. stuck at home, um, dominating 2K, FIFA, <laughs> all that. But um, I guess getting a little bit back on track, obviously your first couple of years, in particular the start of 2019, was pretty tough for you because, you know, you only managed to play the um, three of the first 13 games and it was hard. You know, I guess your old coach, Richo, he was playing a lot of the older players because he needed to win games sort of because he was on a lot under a lot of media pressure. So tell us about the struggles of what the start of 2019 was, particularly after you had a really successful first season in which you played 15 games, rising star nomination, you name it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a bit challenging at, at first. You know, I had a pretty good pre-season. Um, and then, yeah, missed um, selection for – there's a few things few things happening and um, missed selection um, early in the year and it was a bit in it. Bit of a scapegoat at first, but um, really, what well, in terms of? I just you know, I'd, if we we had a few losses and not scapegoat, but I, yeah, I was just got dropped a couple of times off um, a few a few losses. When I didn't nest, I didn't play too badly, but I guess that's footy. Because uh, you're playing a lot but, forward then as well, like yeah. So I was yeah, I was I wasn't really I was playing yeah forward back and mid every game. Which would have so been it was kind of hard to. Oh yeah, it was pretty annoying. It's just hard to um, settle into a position. But um, yeah, I went and played BFL for four weeks. They I said they said um, we're going to give you like three or four weeks just to because I could have kept coming in and out of the team. Probably the same 
thing would have just kept happening, but they just said, we're going to give you three or four weeks in the VFL, just go play mid, um, just get your confidence up and enjoy it. And I really, it was great for me. I just felt like I was playing local footy. Um, no pressure on myself. Like I was just, yeah, just chasing kicks and, um, you know, got in some form and then come back in the team and, um, yeah, had a, a really strong end to the year um, and felt real confident at AFL level. And, yeah, just held me in good stead for this year to carry that on to, yeah, 2020. Yeah, that's a super attitude to have because I sort of feel like we can all sort of like, because I think anybody that's played sport, they've faced setbacks and I guess issues with selection and I know mm. I certainly have. So it's a really mature, I guess, attitude to have to sort of just go back, get to the basics. And it's something that it, even from somebody as young as you, 21, it's just really, I guess, mature outlook to have and somebody I think all people from all levels of the sport can take on. Yeah, well, I, I, I probably hadn't dealt with too much setback as a junior especially in footy, so... Um, I was going to say cricket. Yeah, no, nah, cricket, either with cricket, you know, dominated, <laughs> dominated that. Nah, I didn't dominate far from, but... Um, yeah, footy had never really had too many setbacks, so it was a, I guess it was a first for that, and um, just finding ways to overcome that is was good for my growth and learning, yeah. Yeah, how, how did you find those ways to overcome it and kind of... Uh, keep yourself mentally healthy and sane after all those setbacks? Um, yeah, just, uh, well, Sammy Hamill, Aaron Hamill, who is our, our defensive coach, he he was the VFL coach last year. He just um, wanted me to just enjoy it, enjoy footy and, um, you know, treat it, not put any pressure on myself. And that's literally what I did. And I would carry that into the AFL. So he was, he was huge for me. Um, you know, like it wasn't a huge setback. Like everyone misses selection in their career, so it was just something I had to deal with. And yeah, he helped helped me do that. And yeah, it's just held me in good stead. Yeah, you had a bloody strong last like six or seven games. I think you averaged like twenty four disposals. And I think that coincided a lot with Brett Radden, which I know all you hear out of like St Kilda and in the media is how good a bloke Brett Radden is. So maybe talk a little bit about your love for the uh, the great man. Yeah, yeah, he's a um, he's a great man. Um, we had him had him last year as our assistant, and then he, he took over this year. He's, he's just a big kid, really. Um, you know, we played cricket in the change rooms every day, just about, and he always um, he always does that um, with us. Um, always on the footy field, playing games with us, tackling us, like just having a laugh. Like he obviously, like you can tell, he'd love to still be playing. Um, so it's just those types of things that he just creates, creates great energy and, um, you know, all the boys love him. He's, he's been really refreshing for our footy club. So he's obviously uh, helped the team a lot to uh, go into this massive year that you just had. Uh, go into the finals campaign. Tell us a bit about, like, just how great that was just to have this season that probably most people didn't predict. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was awesome going into – into the year, probably, you know, at the start of the year, we brought in a lot of new players, but a lot of, um, you know, no one really, everyone still wrote us off, which was fine. Didn't I didn't really look too much into it because I didn't really know how how we would go either, to be honest. I wasn't, wasn't sure if we'd, you know, make finals or whatever. That's obviously what we aspired to do. But, yeah, having not played with, you know, six or seven new blokes in the team, um you know, you have kind of no idea what's going to happen. But, yeah, we we, we finished six or so. I think we lost four games by under three points or something. And two of those, we were up by five goals. So, you know, if we won those, we probably we potentially could have finished top of the ladder, which would have been a bit crazy. So, um, you know, we, have, we beat the dogs and, you know, I think we won by two points or something. So that was that was surreal. Um, it's pretty, yeah, um, what was that? What was that step up to finals like, mate? Because I feel like you always hear, oh, there's, I guess, finals games are so different to um, home and away. Was it really like that for you? Did you notice a massive step up in the intensity and the speed of the contest? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was, it was, well, it was a perfect day in, in Brisbane, so it was, it was still like you know perfect conditions to play footy, to skillful, like to run, to kick, or like it wasn't a slog or anything, but. The intensity was definitely up. Um, 
the crowd. It was a big crowd, biggest crowd we had all year. So that was that was different, also, um, or second biggest crowd or something. So that was different. But um, yeah, through, I don't get too nervous for games through the year, really this year. But I was I was pretty nervous going into that first final. Um, yeah, j- just on that quickly, uh, we are running out of time, but uh, we've got a listener question from uh, Gabriel Kelly. Uh, he's asking how nervous you got during that last quarter against the Dogs. Yeah, yeah, so nervous. I think I, I, I don't know how much we were up by, but I thought I did think, yeah, we were home probably halfway through it. Um, I thought, like, yeah, shit, how good is this? Like, we're going to win a final. Um, and then they just stormed home. Um and yeah, we just we just stopped we just stopped really. So we just hung on. If, if it went for if it went for two more minutes, we probably would have lost by two goals probably. So we were we were lucky in that sense. But up and up until that, probably ten minutes, we we dominated the whole game. So um, in the end, like, yeah, we got we got a, a good result which we felt we deserved. But yeah, it was, it was very nervous, nerve wracking. But um. Just yeah, to experience that finals win with everyone was yeah, it was unreal, unreal moment, and um, definitely the highlight of my footy journey so far. Yeah, actually, I've got something which I don't think you know that I know this, but something I think thought was pretty amazing was after that game, you actually you went around the room and got a Saints jumper signed for what turns out you know Oscar Craig. It was actually his girlfriend's grandfather, which was a pretty awesome thing for you to do. It was just going to be signed by you, but you actually got the whole team that played in that winning final. And I think that really made the world to him. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I got a, got a jumper sent up. Um, you know, there's it happened, a lot of the boys throughout the year um, – with friends and family and, and so on, we're able to, you know, get get all the boys and all the boys love doing it. Um, you know, signing jumpers and um, sending them out to whoever whoever they're going to. So yeah, just got got all the lads to sign it. Um, and yeah, obviously obviously got that sent back. So um, it's just those little things that you kind of take out of it. Yeah, you're a good man. Now, building into big, uh, a big 2021, you've got a couple of recruits. Tell us how excited you are to see bikes like Jack Higgins, Brad Crouch, Sean McKernan running around and the mighty Saints colours. Um, yeah, nah. He, go, he, he goes pretty classic. I played a bit of under-18s with him, so he's um, he's a he's a funny man. So Is he as funny as me? <laughs> nah, not quite as funny as you, mate. Not, yeah, I thought so. Not quite. <laughs> Um, nah, he, he'll be he'll be pretty classic to run around with, and yeah, Crouch is Crouch is a gun, so that'll will help for sure. And um, yeah, big big Sean McCann, and um, he'll be uh, yeah, he's, I'm pretty sure he's a great bloke, so he'll be he'll be good to run around with as well. What about yourself? What are your plans for 2021? Are you planning on playing a little bit more midfield? Because I feel like that was a pretty common listener question. You know, they want to know if you're going to stay off half back or if you're going to get your big chassis up into the midfield. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, to be honest. I'd probably play half back still um, and then just, keep, you know, progress through the midfield a bit more each game or as the weeks go on. But hopefully have a good, good summer. Um, and you know, I'd love to play mid every week, but there's pretty hot competition now for spots there. So, um, you know, I'll just wherever I can get a game, really, I'll just cop that. So yeah, so Hunter, what is some of your interests outside of footy? Because I know that you love your basketball and you love your music. Could you please maybe speak a little bit about that, about that and some other interests that you have? Yeah, no, I like, I like a lot of sports. Um, you know, basketball, cricket. I just started getting into NFL. Um, yeah, we had an NFL guest on the other week. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I heard, I heard about that. Um, that was actually when it first popped up to me. Um, I actually gave that a listen. That was pre- yeah, pretty good. Um, oh, you listened it, to it? Yeah, had, had a listen. Um, Jeez, half so, our listenership there. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, nah, uh, sports, you know, basketball, cricket, all that stuff. Um, like my music. Yeah. Um, what sort of music do you listen to? Yeah, what's in the uh, Spotify playlist, mate? Yeah, I haven't I haven't actually been into it a lot lately, but I love I've been loving oh, I've loved my old school rap for a while. Um so any 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 music really, like um 
bit of flame. Yeah, you got a little bit of a vinyl collection going at yeah, the moment, is that a, correct? You love your you love your records. What are some of the records that you own? Yeah, I got a vinyl last year. Um, got a Florence and Machine. Um, you know, like a few like Dr. Dre, Fifty Cent stuff like that. Um, who else? I can't remember. I actually broke the needle on it. We had people over one night, um, and the needle snapped. So I haven't, I haven't, oh, no. I haven't, haven't used it for, since I've since probably April, which is a bit annoying. But um, you know, I got I probably have forty or fifty now. So um, they're all they're all at mum and dad still. So. You know, actually, off the top of my head, I can't really remember what I got. But dad, dad used to have one, so you know, got a, a few classics off him, a few Rolling Stones, stuff like that. Yeah, we got a record player with the with the new house that I'm staying at. And so for my birthday, my sister got me Flume, the yeah. um skin. So yeah, got me that. So I'm pretty keen to um. She hasn't given it to me yet, even though my birthday was like a month ago. But I'm yeah, right. I'm keen to give I'm keen to give that a crack. But yeah. do you have any other interests? Are you play a bit of golf or anything? Or no, I'm I'm getting into golf. Um, my housemate Jack loves his golf, so um, I'm hopefully going to get a pair. Uh, you know, some sticks next next week, hopefully, and I'll start to give that a go. Um, no, I lived near the beach my whole life, so I loved going for a walk down the beach, go for a swim, stuff like that. Yeah, I've actually, I saw Angus a couple of times, your younger brother. I don't know if he told you on that safety beach walk. Yeah. Always good to stop and have a good day all, to him. He's always down there these days. He loves loves going for a stroll. Um, loves his cappuccinos. Loves his cappa, yeah. Yeah, that's weird you uh, weren't into the golf before, mate. I thought it was compulsory when you got drafted to be into golf. But yeah. mate, we're, we're going to do a bit of uh, rapid fire with some listener questions now. This one's from uh, a man, Adam Schenk, on Instagram. Uh, he asks, what's Lockie Gibbs like to have as a mate? <laughs> um, oh, one word, pest. <laughs> I've known him. I've played. We, I've known him for a very long time. I've played a bit of footy and cricket together. Um but yeah, no, he's a great he's a great man, but he can talk some shit. That's for sure. <laughs> and now I'll, I'll kind of combine a couple into one. Uh, so this one's from Chief Keith.w on Instagram. Will you win two or three Brownlows? And uh, Stephen Goed, I believe, on Facebook. How long until we win a Brownlow? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever win a Brownlow. I'll, I'll, if I can win a flag, I'll be I'll be pretty stoked. That's that's what I'll aim for. If, if I get a Brownlow. I'll, That'd be that'd be nice, but um, you know, I never I never really think of that. Just thinking of you know what it would be like to win a flag. Would be that's that's the main goal for sure. Yeah. Uh, now I uh, actually hear that uh, you kind of forced Lockie to um, uh, for him to put you into his uh, super coach team uh, for your debut. So tell us a bit about that, and also uh, from Richard Herbert on Facebook, will you average over ninety points in fantasy this year? You gun. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I can't, I can't remember. I think Gibbsy. I'm not sure what I would have scored um, back in my debut. It wouldn't have been many, but I got a, I kicked the goal, so that would have got a few points, but. Um, I think Gibbsy had me as a cash cow. Um, <laughs> he would have. I think he had me day one of day one of preseason. Um, always pestering me about where I was going to play. So um, yeah, that was that. And I, I don't know. Honestly, um, I don't really know. I, haven't, I used to love me super coach with Gibbsy, but I haven't done it for a long time. So I'm not really too sure what what gets a good score these days or. Um, yeah, could you get to... back into it? Because I know like Hugh Greenwood does a super coach. Like, are you allowed to do that? Or yeah, you, yeah, you can. Um, Mate, get back into it. Yeah, it's more just time consuming now. I would. I just like now that I haven't done it for years. I'm sure if I did it, I'd love it. But you're no yeah. good anyway, mate. So just jump back in. I was fucking better than you, mate. <laughs> Anyway, now we've got a we've got another listener question. We've actually got this one recorded. As you know, you've got a massive fan from over in Japan, Yosh. Oh yeah, Yoshi. It's, it's the weird we begin fan club as well. The Japanese fan club is mate. Yeah, he's he's leading the fan club, Yosh. So I've got a little question for you, mate. Here he's got oh, it on yeah. record. The Osaka correspondent. <laughs> Good day, Hunter. Uh, it's Yoshi from uh, Osaka Dingos. Also, uh, I'm a Saint Kilda uh, club member. Um, I'm very impressed with your on-field uh, performances uh, in a ball use. Also, um, how our players, you know, uh, played well. I have uh, two questions. At first, how do you beat, you know, uh, under the pressure from opponents? 
you are uh, really, really good at uh, chasing the ball, uh, handball, and kicked, and you know, uh, hit the target very well. The second question is um, Do you prefer to play in the midfield or a uh, back line? Just might go Saints. Uh, cheers, cheers, Yoshi. That gives you always feeds me the messages from Yoshi. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty cool knowing you know someone in Japan, all over the world, you know, following you. So um, I appreciate it, mate. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I just, I get lucky. I think under pressure. I, I honestly think I just, I find myself in some lucky situations where it looks like. Um, Stop being modest, have, mate. Stop being I modest. Have a, I have a lot of time, but really, I just. I'm just in good luck. Um, so I think that that's all I have to say to that. Um, Mate, just quickly on that because I forgot to mention it before, but do you sort of sit back and laugh? Because like in your draft year, a couple of the comments were that your kicking wasn't your strength and then you've come to the AFL and it gets pr- a lot of port. It's by the amount of targets they hit right on left foot. Um, oh, a little bit. Not not really. I didn't really ever read into yeah. that stuff too much. I think I more mean the draft experts sort of they get a lot of stuff wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, like a lot of the draft experts are blokes like you that <laughs> don't know too much about it. So, um, no, I never really, never really look at that. To be honest. Yeah, we, we actually had a bit of a plan to do a draft preview of the pod. I was suggesting getting all the, the big guns, the top draft guys. Lockie just uh, wanted to do it by himself because he knows everything about it, apparently. Uh, but, mate, uh, we've got a famous last segment on the show. Uh, we call it the Where Do We Begin Quiz. So, I'm going to be pitting you up against Lockie. Uh, I've got five questions, and they're all like very vaguely related to your career. So uh, you've obviously a uh, very competitive guy against Lockie, so uh, hopefully you come out on top here, uh, or else yeah. he's going to never shut up about it. So uh, question one. So what, what's your birthday, just quickly, Matt? Um, 26th of the 3rd, 99. Okay, so uh, there was a particular song that was uh, top of the Australian charts on the 26th of March, 1999. It was there for nine weeks, actually. Uh, I'm going to read out the lyrics, and you've got to tell me what the song is. Uh, oh, and your name's your buzzer, by the way, so just buzz in any time here. So top of the charts on the 26th of March, 99. So here's the lyrics. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby, baby. How was I supposed to know that something wasn't right here? Oh, baby, baby. I shouldn't have let you go, and now you're out of sight. Yeah. Show me how you want it to be. Tell me, baby, because I need to know now, oh, because... My loneliness is killing me, and I, I must confess, I still believe, still believe, when I'm not with you, I lose my mind. Give me a sign. Hit me, baby, one more time. One more time. time. Hit, Rocky, Britney Spears, yeah. hit me, baby, one more time. Yeah, he's nailed, he's nailed it. He's nailed it. No idea. Jeez, I was hoping if you might get that earlier. I was kind of running out of breath there. But anyway, question two, Rocky's 1-0 up. Uh, question yeah, it two, is a cl- it's the closest to the pin question. So, uh, obviously, your first name's Hunter. So, uh, there are uh, a few Hunter Islands around the world. Uh, one of them's off, just off the coast of northwest Tasmania. One of them's uh, in the Bronx in New York City. So, I want you to tell me the distance between Hunter Island in Tasmania and Hunter Island in New York City. Um, distance in kilometers. Rocky, distance. I'll, I'll go. Rocky, go for it. I don't know. I'll go 25,000 Ks. 25,000 Ks, okay. What's your stab? I'll go, I'll go 40,000. Uh, you've both gone a bit too high there. It is 16,775 Ks. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, that's uh, one that I'm sure you all remember. Anyway, Geography uh, is not one of my strong suits, one of my few <laughs> gaps in knowledge. Yeah, but I'm not good with that. Okay, so question three, obviously, last name being Clark. So uh, I'm sure you're both aware who Clark Kent is. He's otherwise known as Superman, uh, yeah. Clark Kent. I want you to tell me what decade he first appeared in comics. Rocky, I'll go 1930. 1930s is correct. <laughs> That's yeah. three. That's two. Uh, no, it's three. It's three. Oh, got, closest, uh, closest to, to pin and baby one more time. So April 18, 1938 in Action Comics number one. So it's going to take something special for you to come back here, Hunter. But uh, yeah. question four, 
Uh, obviously, your number for the Saints, number 11. So uh, Millie Bobby Brown plays 11 in which Netflix original series? Lockie. Hunter. Lockie Paul. just got in there. Stranger Things. Stranger Things is absolutely correct. This could be oh, a crash. Yeah. It's 4 0. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter's not looking very up and about, but. We go on to question five, and Hunter, you're in the shot here because question five is a who am I question, and I'm going to start with five points, go all the way down to one point with a series of clues, and once you buzz in, you can't buzz in again until the other person gets it wrong. (laughs) So if you get it on the five-point clue, you can uh, win 5-4, but that might be a bit unlikely. But anyway, uh, for five points, I was born on the 26th of March, 1991 in Victoria, Australia. Hunter, do you want to have a, a crack or should I move on to the four-point clue? In? No, maybe I'll go four-point. Okay. Maybe you can force a tie break here. We'll see. For four points, I played 174 AFL games and played for two clubs. Lockie. Lockie, jeez. There's no way. Dane Beams. Dane Beams is incorrect. Hunter, do you want to have a crack? Um, I'll go. Are they retired? Oh, I can't say that. Uh, only the information. I'll give him a crack. Come on. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll say he, he's retired. He's retired. Um, I don't know. I'll have a stab. We'll go. Go. Bernie Vince. It's not Bernie 29. Vince is also uh, incorrect. Mm. So, but we'll, uh, it's a dead rubber now, so we'll move it on to the three-point clue. You can both have a crack if you want. Uh, for three points, a prodigy in two different sports. I was considered potentially the best point guard basketballer in the country and was named in the 2008 AFL Under-18 All-Australian team. I'll move it on to the two-point clue. I debuted in my club's biggest game of the year in 2009, playing a further 151 games oh, Lockie, for that club. Lockie, Jack Watts. Jack Watts. Jack Watts is absolutely correct, and he's won at 6-0. That's a huge victory. <laughs> so sorry. What's that say for yourself? I was looking forward to that. Uh, that's shambolic. 6-0 loss. There aren't even six questions. You've lost 6-0. That's just... Yeah. Embarrassing. Yeah, but well, oh, mate. Once I forget. Once I forget. But, Used to it by now. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, uh, I think we'll leave it there because uh, uh, we've got some other stuff to get to. So thank you very much for coming on, mate. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thank, thanks for the chat, guys. It's been been a good hour um, yeah. to you know talk about all my footy and all that. So, yeah, cheers for having me. Uh, thanks so cheers. much, Hunter, talking a year or two's time. Wow, how good was that? Apart from the amount of times you got into me, Hunt, it was a bloody good episode. Yeah, yeah, big time. Uh, it was great to chat about all things hub life, all things playing for the Saints in uh, the 2020 season, pretty amazing. And, of course, uh, uh, his relationship with you, that was very, very interesting. Hunter Clark, great guy to talk to. Yeah, and no, thanks again, Hunter, but I think it's time to plug the socials. So you can find us on Facebook at Where Do We Begin? And you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at WDWBpod. That's WDWBpod. Yeah, yeah, spot on, mate. Bit of a tongue twister there, but WDWB Pod is where you find us. And, of course, uh, give us a good review, whether it's online or in person with some of your mates. That'll be hugely appreciated, and then we can get more great episodes out like this. And, of course, thank you to everyone who listened to this show, uh, and thank you uh, just for being a great supporter of the show. Uh, anything else, Lockie? I just like to thank the listeners too. You guys are awesome and I appreciate it so much. In fact, we appreciate it so much. We'll see you next Monday with another huge episode.